Nikola has had a roller coaster 2020, from going public through a SPAC a few months ago on a massive run, to crashing just recently on reports of a potential fraud. This stock is in the spotlight both for good and bad news, and it's been a volatile time for investors. Now, as of recording this video here, the SEC is not yet involved, and the stock is still trading on the market. However, I'm gonna outline some risks that I see coming, and why it's actually very likely that the SEC will step in sometime soon here for Nikola stock, and what that means for you if you're holding the stock here today. So if you appreciate my insights here, and you appreciate me giving you kind of like a heads up here on what could happen very likely in Nikola stock, consider smashing that like button down below. It helps the channel out a ton and I appreciate that. So here's Nikola's chart as of recording this video and we can see right now the stock is sitting at its 200 day moving average, which tends to be a strong level of support for stocks. But just a few days ago, we were much higher than all of our moving averages. But that Heidenberg report that came out really took a toll on Nikola stock and resulted in this big sell off. Now, if you're not familiar what report I'm referring to, I created a video on that and I kind of went over the brief highlights, kind of things that you should know if you're invested in Nikola stock. So make sure to check that out. I will leave a link in the description down below. But either way, you kind of got to ask yourself, why did the stock drop on this report? The answer is pretty straightforward. It's because of fear and uncertainty. The market hates uncertainty. If there's any uncertainty out there, the market typically reacts negatively. We see this not only in individual stocks, but also in the broader market. Now, in Nikola's case, this report that was released last week drew a ton of uncertainty in Nikola stock, and as a result, investors decided to sell. Questions like, uh, is Nikola really a fraud? Is this report true? Are all the allegations of this report actually true? Like. That, that's kind of concerning if it is, right? So these kind of questions come into your mind and then at the end of it you say, is Nikola Theranos 2.0? And that's the part that scares a ton of investors, which resulted, in my opinion, in a lot of selling as we saw. Now, these investors are typically seen as weak hands, you know, ones that sell off on any negative news, whether it's a big negative news or small negative news. There's always investors that sell because of uncertainty and fear. However, in this case, based on the volume that we saw with the selling, there clearly was a lot of fear out there from both large and small investors. Now, if you recall, a few months ago, we had some bold claims around Luck and Coffee and their financials and how they were spoofing it and lying about it essentially and what really happened there. Well, first the stock was halted while they were investigated, but once investigations were complete and the rumors and allegations were confirmed, the stock absolutely plummeted. Investors ran for the hills, and guess what? The stock also resulted in getting delisted from the main US exchange, and now only trades over the counter. It has lost credibility with investors, it has lost big money for the company, and it has become a company that most people don't want to touch with a 10-foot pole. Could Nikola be headed down the same path? So far, we seem to be going down this path. And after this Hindenburg research report came out, a lot of questions started arising here with investors that were very bullish on Nikola previously. We're also seeing other famous short selling firms like Citroen Research backing up Hindenburg publicly, showing that there's a lot of skepticism out there when it comes to this company and their founder, Trevor Milton. So now logically, there's a lot of attention on this company. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of doubt, there's a lot of allegations thrown out there. So what happens next? In my mind, an SEC investigation is most likely gonna happen here with Nikola. And really, I think the SEC should get involved here because there's just so much thrown out there. There's just so much uncertainty. There's just so many new investors that got sucked into this stock because of the hype built around this company that the SEC really needs to go in and make sure that everything they're saying is true. Now, the interesting thing is that Nikola does see this coming. They kind of realized that the SEC is most likely going to get involved. So they were kind of proactive here with what they did. On September 14th in the morning, Nikola actually published a response stating that they contacted and briefed the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission, the SEC, regarding their concerns over the Hindenburg Research Report. They also state that Nikola intends to fully cooperate with the SEC regarding its inquiry into these matters. 
Well, obviously it's good that they said this because if they chose to not work with the SEC here, that could result in a lot of issues for the company. So in my opinion, the writing is kind of on the wall. Things have escalated to a point now where an SEC investigation is more or less inevitable. Both parties want the SEC involved. One wants it involved to show that this company is a fraud, that they're lying, that everything that they said is not true. And one wants the SEC involved for the complete opposite, to show that everything they said is true, to show that they actually are a legitimate company and they're not lying about anything that they've stated. So I think over the next few weeks, we're going to see some back and forth here because this news is fresh and there's a lot of eyes on this. And like I said, I would not be surprised to wake up one morning and see that Nikola stock is now halted. Now, if that does happen, what does that mean for you? Well, you wouldn't be able to sell any of your shares at that point or buy more shares if you wanted to. You're just kind of stuck holding those shares until the SEC decides, you know what, okay, fine, we can resume trading once again. And at that point, you can sell your shares or buy more shares. However, the risk you're taking on with that is that if anything comes out of that investigation that's negative, Remember luck and coffee? Yeah, well, Nicola could follow that same trend. So what would I do in this situation? Well, guys, if you've been following the channel, you know right from the get-go, I've been public on my stance on Nicola. I looked into the company, I looked at their reports, looked at their financials, looked at their business model, looked at as much as I could about the company, and I was not impressed, and I was definitely not convinced enough to put any money into this company. I know initially, a lot of people were bullish on this company. They're like, this is the next Tesla. I'm gonna throw my money in here. I'm gonna you know, 10X, 100X, 1000X my investment over time. And that's great, but the fundamentals to me did not back that up, which is why I chose not to invest in Nikola. I also was very skeptical on the company from the beginning because they didn't really have a product to show for. And typically that would be okay. You know what? There's sometimes smaller companies out there. They have a concept. They're working on prototypes and that's just how the business cycle works. And I'm completely fine and on board with that. However, when a company warrants a 20 billion plus market cap, but they have nothing to show for it. And you know, a lot of new investors just got sucked into the hype and the marketing from this company. That's when I see an issue with it, and that's why I've never really been a huge fan of Nikola. So if by some miracle I bought into Nikola stock today, I would most likely consider selling out of my position because I think the risk is just too large right now to actually continue holding for the foreseeable future. There's just so much going on with this company. There's just so many allegations. There's so many short sellers and firms and, and pretty much the media attacking this company. And maybe you could say it's like Tesla last year. However, Tesla actually had fundamentals to back things up and Nikola, in my opinion, does not. So that's where I kind of draw the line between the two. That's where the differences are between the two. And I think the risks for holding this stock right now is just too large for me personally. You really have to come to terms that the stock will most likely see an SEC investigation. The stock could see itself getting halted and the stock could get delisted from the US exchange. If you accept those risks and you're still fine with holding Nikola, more power to you and I do hope the investment works out for you. But for me, if by some miracle I was in the stock, I would pack my bags up, sell my shares, chalk it up as a loss and just move on. If you believe that hydrogen technology, which is what Nikola is really touting and you know, pushing forward is the future, then there are other businesses to look into like Toyota or some other companies that are really pushing and working on hydrogen. And I think for me personally, with my investing style, those companies make a lot more sense as investments. Remember, I'm an investor, not a gambler. So I'm not gonna go gamble my money here and hope the SEC investigation goes well and hope that the stock doesn't get halted and hope that the stock recovers from everything and things go well for it. I don't really try to base my investments on hope. I try to base it on facts and fundamentals, which Nikola, in my opinion, is really lacking. An alternative could also be, you know, sell that stake in Nikola and put that money into Tesla. Competitors, different types of technology, but if you believe that green technology is something that's gonna be big, especially for semi-trucks, Tesla is well on their way to producing their Tesla semis, although they're using different technology, but they've proven that it can work with their cars, so they're definitely much further ahead than Nikola is. Really what I do is I tend to think this way with my investments, right? So if I was selling a stock today and I was taking a loss on it or whatever, I have to look around and see where can I put my money that'll actually yield me even more than this stock does. 
maybe with lower risk, maybe with better fundamentals, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, we're here to make money with our investments. And if I can find a better spot for my money, I would rather sell Nikola and put my money in there. In this case, I think Tesla, like I said, is a good option. So I would probably sell my Nikola stake, even though Tesla is valued so highly. I think that company over the long term will probably yield me better results with much less risk. So I put my money in there. But guys, you have to also come to terms with the other side of the coin here. Maybe everything that we're seeing is completely wrong. Maybe Nikola has not lied about anything. Maybe Nikola is, you know, the company that they say that they are. They're actually working on these things. They have stuff to back things up. And if that's the case, that's great. And I do hope all investors in the stock that truly do believe that come out with a massive profits over the long term. I never want to see a company fail because I think that new companies that come up uh, pretty much push the envelope and force older companies to innovate quicker, drive more competition, all these kind of things, which in the end is good for consumers and the world in general. However, when I see a lot of hype being built up by the company themselves, by the founder of the company, just for the sole reason to get investors excited, that's when I kind of lose a bit of credibility and I'm like, you know what, focus on the business. Don't focus on hyping the company, the stock and all that stuff. Just focus on the business, the technology, and eventually that hype will come naturally when consumers and investors believe in what you say. Anyways, the bottom line is on this channel, we focus on long-term investing. And in my opinion, Nikola is looking like a weak long-term investment. So I will not be touching that stock with a 10 foot pull, like I mentioned. However, if you are looking for some short-term trading, short-term in and out, you know, make some money on Nikola, if it halts and all this stuff, short the stock, all that kind of fun short-term stuff. This is probably not the channel for you. There's a ton of other channels out there, so I wish you all the best. But for my long-term investors, let me know in the comment section down below what you think about Nikola. Do you think that they'll get through this? Do you think the company will actually survive? Where do you think the company will be in the next five to 10 years? Love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below, guys. But either way, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to invest positively, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.